Hello, I'm Chris Richmond, and today I'm off to Norwich to discover a rather special local amenity in one of the city's public parks. With its grand architecture, numerous sports pitches and large boating pond, Eaton Park is as popular now as it was when it first opened almost 100 years ago. But tucked away in the southeastern corner of the park is perhaps a more unusual attraction. For almost 70 years, this has been the home of the Norwegian District Society of Model Engineers, an organisation which dates back to 1933, aimed at encouraging young model makers and giving them a space to hone their skills. Originally just a modest circuit of raised 5-inch gauge track installed in the late 1950s, the Eaton Park Miniature Railway has significantly expanded into the park, with dual gauge tracks crisscrossing the footpaths. The little trains currently operate every Sunday, and on this crisp autumnal Sunday morning, I meet volunteer Brian Sayer to find out more. All right, so thank you very much for having me, Brian. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, the Eaton Park Railway, where, where did it all start? Um, in Eaton Park, uh, 1956, they were offered the area. Um, and later on, 58, uh, they built a raised track all the way around this end of the park. And then much later, in 2003, they were offered some more land on the tennis courts. Uh, which they gladly took, and they built a ground level track, which we're using today. So the, the original raised track is currently not in use, is it? Uh, no, we went to a lot of uh, bother putting new sleepers on it, and um, we've now found that because of health and safety rules, there's a great big tree which is a bit too close to the track, so at the moment we're wondering what to do about it. It is a big tree, and we can't really move the track. So at the moment it's, it's out of use, but the club members use it for their private use. Um, obviously you've got loads, loads of things floating about on the track. Are you under a, a, a light rail order or is it pretty much just like a giant train set? Uh, a bit like a giant um, train set. We're a miniature railway. The maximum speed on the line is six miles an hour with passengers. So uh, what kind of stock operates on the line here? Um, we've got six passenger cars which um, the passengers sit astride and there's one access car for wheelchair users. There is a ramp at both sides and we take wheel wheelchair passengers or large families with dogs can go on there and we can shut them in you know, so they don't get out. The club owns uh, three, maybe four locomotives which are used as stop gaps, basically, uh, when everything else fails. Yeah, so uh, you own a locomotive yourself, a uh, little Class 66. Tell us a bit about that. Um, it was one I bought from a former member here in 2022. It was only six months old when I bought it. Um, I'd take it to other railways and put it on a trailer behind the car and take it to St Neots, and they're always pleased to see me. And it's a, when it's working properly, it's a superb engine. Very, very powerful and has often saved the day here, you know, when everything else is given up. And of course, it's a battery electric, isn't it? Yes. What, what's, what's kind of the range on, the, on that loco? I mean, how many hours can that continue pulling passenger trains before, before it dies? Well, when it was nearly new, it used to do four hours easily. Uh, but, but batteries have a life. Uh, the loco runs on four leisure batteries, 85 amp hour, and they're a hundred pounds each and I've replaced them once and it's looking as though I'm going to have to replace them again. Brian's Class 66 is fitted with an electronic speaker system which recreates the distinct thrum of the General Motors two-stroke diesel engine. Recreating scaled-down versions of real locomotives like Brian's is only one part of this fascinating hobby. More adventurous engineers like Mike Riches design and build completely new locomotives from scratch. Mike has built a variety of different vehicles which have graced the rails here at Eaton Park. 
the most recent being this petrol-powered machine. All right, so Mike, how many of these locomotives have you built for a start? I built seven, seven locomotives of different uh, types, uh, petrol engines mostly, uh, different drive systems, uh, a couple of diesels, uh, and then uh, this particular one is uh, one which was originally a chassis of a, a diesel which I built, but the diesel was too powerful for the chassis, so I put that on a larger chassis, the engine, and then this chassis was sitting around in the workshop, so then I decided to put this one together uh, in 2024, just last year. It's a very simple locomotive, there's not much to it, it's just a, a quick build uh, with a Honda uh, GX160 petrol engine driving a wet clutch through a little forward and reverse transmission uh, straight down to both wheels uh, and so it's just driven a little bit like a petrol goo kart basically. It's a very simple basic locomotive which I've now sold on to one of our younger members in the club who needed a loco to run, a reliable loco with a Honda engine that's going to see him well. So uh, I've got to ask, what is the top speed on something like this? This one's only geared for about seven. Uh, because of the wet clutch, if we have it geared too high, uh, you're going to be slipping the clutch a hell of a lot, especially on this railway where we come out the station, we're on three mile an hour, on a tight curve and a bit of uphill gradient to the tunnel. So you'd be on the clutch all the way around and that'll soon get hot. So with seven mile an hour gear, and you can have the clutch literally fully in just off idle and uh, it helps keep everything cool and uh, so there's no drama or anything. So uh, where does one start driving this thing? Let's have a, let's have a look at the, uh, well, the controls. Yeah. The forward and reverse gearbox has got a neutral, which is handy. It's handy to have a neutral so you can rev the engine up if you want to test anything. So you pop it into forwards, it's ready to go. Then it's just a case of knocking the brake off and applying some throttle and then away you go. Uh, the only thing with this uh, is all these gearboxes that are available uh, have got a, a half speed reverse so reverse can be a bit painful but at the same time it's not designed for reverse running out, out on main line so it's ideal just for shunting around uh, nice slow speed and if we're going to shunt some heavy coaches in the tunnel we'll always do it backwards because then that takes some of the uh, strain away on the clutch as well and that's as simple as that to drive really uh, just uh, electric horn, they've got vacuum gear on board as well which the new owner wanted so I popped that on for him so he hasn't got to worry about finding a guard coach with a vacuum pump on board he can use his own pump and then if he does visit other railways he can produce vacuum on any of the other railways so that gets him out there and uh, with a, a usable loco nice simple one as well to maintain In contrast to this lean mean machine Perhaps the most distinct and certainly the most hard-working loco on the railway is the thumping industrial diesel, affectionately known as Pat the Petter. Right, so we're here with uh, Pat the Petter. Um, this is your pride and joy, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the, uh, the interesting one I enjoy, enjoy driving. It's uh, the one I did building as well. And, uh, Few details about it. I, I was not very inspired by the two foot gauge industrial logos, uh, side saddle ones that you see with the twin cylinder listers. And I thought, why don't I build a single cylinder lister petter uh, in cylinder quarter? So that'll be like a half size version. Uh, I wanted to do a mechanical transmission to keep it as realistic with his clutch and everything. So I've done a freelance one that became Pat the Petter, uh, built in 2019. I was running a List the Petter AC1ZS. They originally were Petter engines, but they got taken over by the List the Petter joint together. And it's the slow speed version, it's a ZS, so it's got the large flywheel. Uh, drives a pair of belts to a Reliant Regal from 1968. Uh, it runs the car clutch, uh, runs the car clutch, four speed manual gearbox, uh, with a single speed reverse, driving both wheels. Uh, and it's been a really good heavy hauler here at the club and uh, runs all down and make a couple full of diesel and does a great job but it's very interesting to have to shift here on the move which is unusual in this scale, in this uh, gauge. I mean, you could certainly hear it coming, certainly yeah. you've got plenty of character and of course it pretty much runs here every week doesn't it? Yep. How many yep. miles do you reckon you do? Oh it's, uh, it's doing a fair, a fair few, probably about 20 odd miles every Sunday. Uh, a couple of the young lads are here at the club which are very skilled at driving it. Uh, 
seems to have mastered clutch control, so I'm sure they'll be great car drivers as well. They're both 16 now, so they're able to uh, drive for the public now, which is much more interesting for them. Uh, and they get the ability to be able to shift gear on the move and just enjoy it, really. Well, it gives me a break too, so... You <laughs> love it. I do love it, yeah. <laughs> At 11 o'clock the gates are opened and the first train of the day is loaded ready to depart. On leaving Parkside Station the trains first pass through a tunnel constructed in 2013 and suitably decorated for special occasions like Christmas and Halloween. Ooh. On leaving the tunnel, the token is handed over and the trains head out into the park, crossing two footpaths and into the gardens. As the line straightens up alongside the tennis courts, the locomotives can stretch their legs. The gardens feature a series of twists and turns, utilising the available space to create a total line length of over 800 yards. Briefly triple track in places, multiple trains can run on the line at any one time. However, on leaving the gardens, the trains are briefly halted by a two-aspect signal before returning to the station. As well as diesel, petrol and electric traction, the railway also operates live steam locomotives, such as this 040, owned by steam driver Malcolm. The club also owns a steam locomotive, aptly named Lady Eaton. A typical day at Eaton Park isn't without its drama. Steam driver Malcolm's locomotive has failed, with passengers on board. Warship to the rescue. A much more reliable battery electric takes the stranded passengers on their way around the park, with an extra lap thrown in for goodwill. With 15 adult passengers weighing about a tonne, I think it's quite remarkable that these tiny steam engines are capable of pulling such a load at all. A hit with young children and families, the railway is so popular that through its ticket sales it raises thousands for local charities each year. We support a number of local charities, principally at the moment that's three special schools which we have long links going back over decades with plus a number of other charities. The Air Ambulance, we support those. Each, we've supported them for many years now, and we have a special day for them here. And a, a chunk of our revenue goes to these charities. The rest, of course, we use to maintain, improve the railway. Uh, a lot of what you see here is 
funded by what comes in over the ticket desk. But the people keep coming. And they do, yeah. The passengers keep on coming, and even today's changeable autumn weather doesn't dampen their hardy spirits. But with the threat of persistent rain lingering, what happens when the heavens finally open? That's a very relevant point to a railway like ours because unlike standard gauge or narrow gauge, we have no covered carriages. So when it rains, basically everything stops. We're in a public park, which you can see here is well populated on a day like this, the next day. But with the rain, the park empties, you know, and our trade is gone. But yeah, rain is a big problem, big problem. Good old British weather. British weather, yeah. <laughs> on a good day, the trains operate until four o'clock, half past three during winter months. And as daylight fades, the trains are put away, ready for another day of hauling happy riders around the park. So as my fascinating visit to this wonderful little railway draws to a close, we've discovered the history, had a glimpse into the ingenious engineering behind the locos, and even if things don't always go to plan, we've seen just how well-loved by the community the railway really is. But the railway wouldn't survive at all without the hard work and dedication of its volunteers. So, how can people get involved here at Eton Park? All you've got to do really is basically come along on a Sunday, have a ride, see, see what you think of it. We have working parties on a Tuesday. We welcome new members to come and help us run the railway and you can become a driver or a guard or platform attendant or even a station master if you want to. There's no limit to ambition here. So there we are, come and join the railway. Yeah, I totally endorse that. From ticketing to guarding, gardening or even just making the tea, the railway is always keen to recruit more volunteers. Why not become part of the history and keep this cherished community asset alive for the next generation? Thanks for watching. Now for the obligatory closing paragraph. If you enjoy my quirky, if slightly self-indulgent adventures, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching and goodbye.